Electrodrum is a pretty simple course with an amazing aesthetic and awesome music. Like I mentioned before, I'm part of a league online where we compete in races and time trials week over week, and this was the first course that I ever seriously time trialed. My original PB was a 202.009, which I got after about 10 hours of practice or so over the course of a single week, and that's before becoming a hardcore speedrunner. Funny thing is that in the years since I set that time, I really hadn't played this course, well, at all really. But when I sat down to put runs together for this video, I managed to beat that time in all of 15 minutes. Welcome to part 11 of basic training where we're going to cover everything you need to know about Electrodrome on 150cc. As always, we're going to cover the recommended builds, mushroom strats, coin lines, and other advanced tips and tricks to help you start mastering the course. This course is somewhat unique in that you can get sick nasty times just by having good racing lines, meaning that a quote unquote level 1 version of the run is going to look almost exactly the same as what I do in my PB. So I'm just going to show you my run and then the world record strats. If you've been finding my tutorials useful, i definitely love to hear from you down in the comments. I read every one and I try to respond to as many of them as possible. Plus, you know, something something, YouTube algorithm, something something. Also, I release one of these videos every week, so if you haven't already, consider becoming a subscriber and hitting the notification bell so that you can be notified every time a new video drops. And I hope you're ready to rage because we are going to the club. There are a couple of viable builds for this course. If you don't plan on doing any advanced strats, then I suggest using Dry Bowser, Mach 8, Leaf Tires, and Cloud Glider. This is a build that puts a pretty strong emphasis on ground speed over Mini Turbo, and gets an even bigger boost to anti-grav speed, which makes up about two-thirds of the course. If you're feeling a little bit more brave, you can use the current world record build of Waluigi, Bitty Buggy, Rollers, and Cloud Glider that we've seen so many times before, but word to the wise, this build isn't that much better for the course than the Dry Bowser build but it is quite a bit harder to use properly. So yeah, stick to the Dry Bowser build. Unfortunately, because I'm a somewhat absent-minded individual, I forgot to swap out the tires when picking my build for the run, so you're gonna see that I use the Dry Bowser build with Azure Rollers instead of Leaf Tires, but you know, do as I say and not as I do. That's enough of that though, let's check out the track. So I lied a little bit when I suggested that there aren't many advanced strats because we're gonna start off the track with one. I'm sure that most of you will probably be tempted to just land on the ground as quickly as possible and then grab a couple of coins here. You can do that without losing a lot of time, but it turns out that it's faster to take this ramp by tricking off of it, holding up on the joystick so that you can start angling down a bit, and then just a little bit before getting the coin, start holding down and right on the joystick to pick yourself back up. I know that this is faster since it helped me improve my own times, but I really don't have a good idea why. If I had to guess, I'd say that it probably has to do a little bit with glider vectoring, which I've mentioned in a few of my videos already, and a little bit to do with the fact that airspeed is actually a little bit faster than ground speed when you have zero coins. Either way though, if you're having a lot of trouble with this strat, just land on the ground and grab the two coins directly. If you do the aerial strat, then start holding down the drift button and left on the joystick so that you can immediately land in a drift. If you did the ground strat, then just start your drift after grabbing the two coins. Either way though, this is quite a wide turn, and you basically want to hold your drift until just after you build a super mini turbo, at which point you want to release and start a right drift. One thing to point out here is that you might notice that my cart is kind of hanging off the track a little bit here. This is more or less what you want to do on every single turn on this track. It can be quite a pain to learn, but I'm telling you, if you basically just focus on hanging as far off the track as possible on every turn, you're guaranteed to get a really good time. On most of the turns in this track, you can accomplish this by doing a neutral drift most of the time, which means not putting any inputs to the joystick and having it completely centered. Now that doesn't mean that you don't want to fiddle with the joystick at all, just that you primarily want to do your drifts by neutral drifting and then just make minor adjustments with the joystick. This is basically the way that I take this turn. However, after getting the super mini turbo and starting your right drift, you're going to want to grab the next two coins on the inside of the turn and build up an ultra mini turbo. And the optimal way to do this is to soft drift that whole turn. But as long as you're not going too far into the wall on the right hand side of the track, it doesn't really matter so much how you build up the ultra mini turbo, just that you do. But this is basically one of two turns in the game where you're not primarily neutral drifting. The next step is to hit the little spinner here and then take the pink path on the right hand side. After grabbing the two coins, start a right drift, and again, notice how tightly I hug the right hand side of the track here. Now the thing about this turn is that the way it's set up is that you're going to turn right, and then go straight for a little while, and then come up on another right turn. 
If you turn too hard to the right after getting onto the pink path though, you're gonna fall off the track. So what you wanna do is hug the turn tightly to start, but then make sure to leave yourself a little bit of room. And after you pass the first right turn, then you can start holding left on the joystick to widen your drift angle. And by the time you get to the second right turn, you should have a super mini turbo built up. And then after that, you wanna release and immediately start a left drift to build up a regular mini turbo. And then once you release that mini turbo, grab the two coins here and then put your joystick in a neutral position again, just until you get to the right hand side of the track. Now you should be more or less able to keep your joystick in neutral for most of the turn here, but at some point you're going to notice the track change from pink to purple. Right before you get to the purple portion of the track, you should be able to start holding a hard right on the joystick to take the turn super tight without falling off the track. Now what I do here is keep holding the drift off the right hand side of the glider ramp so that when I go off of it, my ultra mini turbo will get released automatically. Once this happens, I hold a down and left angle on the joystick to do some glider vectoring before getting back onto the track. Now I explain why we do this in my advanced strats video under the glider mini turbo section, but like the name of that video implies, it is a somewhat advanced strategy and if you don't want to do that, it's still faster just to release the ultra mini turbo and go straight off the glider, instead of tricking off of it. Now after the glider starts coming out, quickly press the drift button which will make your glider come out a little bit lower, and then keep holding down the drift button so that when you land on the track, you'll immediately start drifting left. Now what you're aiming for here is the fourth arrow from the left. We're not going to trick off this ramp though, because what we want to do is keep holding the drift and then right as soon as you get airborne, start holding a hard left on the joystick. This is going to accomplish two things. First, it'll get you set up in a really good line for the shortcut so that you can take the turn as close to the left hand wall as possible. Second, if you keep holding the drift and a hard left, it'll help you build up the ultra mini turbo since your mini turbos can keep charging in midair. Now the shortcut itself isn't that tricky. Once you land, get ready to use your mushroom as soon as you get into the off-road and then start holding right on the joystick to widen your drift angle a little bit. If you notice that you're about to bonk into the pipe, then just get the joystick back in neutral again. Once you notice that the wall starts curving hard to the left, then you can start turning your joystick hard left to finish building up the ultra mini turbo. Now the timing can be a bit finicky here, and if you use your mushroom too quickly, then what'll happen is it'll run out before you get to the other side of the track, and that's just going to kill your drift. So you want to make sure again to use your mushroom just as soon as you're getting onto the off-road, and then you want to release your ultra mini turbo as soon as you get it. And that will bring us to the end of the lap. Now by the time we finish lap 1, we should have 10 coins two from the very start of the lap, two from right after the start of the anti-grav section, two from the start of the pink path, two from after you get onto the purple path, and then two more from the rotating coins before the shortcut. Now if you miss those last two coins, there are additional coins that you can pick up on lap two. The first coin that you can usually grab is the one that's right after the first glider ramp. The second one that you can grab is going to be right before the second glider ramp where the pink and purple paths meet. Laps 2 and 3 are going to be more or less the same as lap 1 though, with the main exception being that you want to try and hit the little spinning boost tower where the path split from pink and green. Now let's take a look at how all this is put together in a full run.
So before we talk about the world record strats, I'd like to quickly reiterate one important point that I brought up earlier, which is that many of the turns can be taken almost exclusively with neutral drifts. And this is important for a couple of reasons. First of all, neutral drifting is just faster than drifting while moving the joystick. Now on 150cc, it doesn't really matter that much, but every little bit helps. The main reason why it's so powerful on this track in particular is that it allows you to maintain really good lines throughout all of your drifts, since the more you mess with the joystick, the more you're gonna have to correct for when you overshoot. So my main piece of advice for this track is this. Watch my run or some of the older Dry Bowser records on the MK8DX Records YouTube channel and try to copy those lines as closely as possible. As a general rule of thumb, the more you neutral drift, the better. The exceptions, of course, are right after the anti-grab section starts and in the first two right turns after the track splits, where you're going to want to hold left on the joystick to avoid falling off the track. All right, so let's check out the world record strategies. We're basically just going to walk through lap one of Alberto's world record run. The first thing you'll notice is the build difference, where he uses the Waluigi build instead of Dry Bowser. This is going to be really important because this build allows you to build mini turbos a lot more quickly, which is going to be evident at the very start of the track here where Alberto does some fancy maneuvering with the cart to get a glider mini turbo and then some glider vectoring. Then, in contrast to my run, he builds up an ultra mini turbo before the anti-grab section. And once he gets onto the anti-grab section, does a lot of counter hop drift strategies to build up more mini turbos. Then, after the path splits, he builds up an ultra mini turbo followed by a super mini turbo, instead of a super mini turbo into the regular mini turbo like you saw in my run. The next difference is that he builds up an extra mini turbo before the glider. The last difference is that he builds up yet another mini turbo after coming out of the mushroom shortcut, which has the added benefit of allowing him to do more glider vectoring. I should also point out that Alberto does motion glider strats for both of these gliders, but that's a fairly recent innovation to this track. So yeah, the way to quickly summarize how my run is different from the world record contender runs, aside from the fact that, you know, they're just really f***ing good, is that they use builds that allow them to build up a lot of extra mini turbos. And while this is definitely faster, the benefit to the Dry Bowser build is that you can get really good times without the need to do any of that. All you need is clean driving. And that is everything you need to know about Electrodrome on 150cc. Honestly, if you're trying to improve at this game, I highly recommend just getting into time trials and running this one course over and over and over again. It's a pretty simple course, all things considered, but you can consistently improve your times just by improving your driving ability as a whole. Of course, I could be biased since, like I said, this is the very first course that I ever time trialed, but if nothing else, at least you'll have a kick-ass soundtrack to listen to. Thank you very much for taking the time out of your day to do some basic training, and as always, I will see you in the next video.